button. Oh shit, I might have said that too fast. Oh well. Eh, you know, shit happens. I gotta hit that button. So y'all can see my pretty face. Can I get a sound check from the Yona? <laughs> Alright, I heard that. I heard that. It's uh it's Thursday night. November 30th, 2023, we are 31 days away from a brand new calendar year. Yeah. And this is uh, the seventh time now uh, that we are getting fact harder here on a Thursday night. Well, it's the seventh time. I think it's the sixth time on a Thursday night. No, actually... Might even be like the fourth time on a Thursday night. I don't know. Have you been I, keeping I track? I can't really keep... Because I'm always so fucking baked that, that I, I'm I know. just all a big smoke cloud. Yeah. I but, can uh, empathize. You know, uh, once again, the Yona just staying right ahead of history because... Uh, you know, we were all talking about Cambodia and Vietnam that the AM wake-ups over the last few days. And uh, I decided to make a new song the other day, which premiered last night on the good old Weed Stays Potluck, uh, referring to the latest, greatest song I cranked out. Um, Your government lies to you, G.I. You should defect, G.I., you have lost this war, GI. Your government will leave you behind. Turned out, turn, you know what? Actually, Hannah and Hannah, kind of being a little bit honest there. Um, but uh, the funny thing is, that was Henry Kissinger's war. And of course, that was one of them. W- one of them, but arguably, the shit that he did in Southeast Asia, I think, will go down as the biggest blemish on his entire career as it should well yeah i mean there there trust me there were uh lots of memes going around about henry kissinger the last 24 hours but one of the ones that i settled on to represent liberty radio uh was the one that was a quote a literal quote word for word from the mouth of anthony bourdain saying that if you ever take the opportunity and i'm paraphrasing but if you ever take the opportunity to travel to cambodia you will spend the rest of your life wanting to murder henry kissinger with your bare hands and i think that pretty much says it all yeah yeah rest in peace anthony bourdain shout out Mm. strasbourg france um yeah, so I mean, we've you. It's like you were reading my mind, Yona. Like I, I just wanted to start tonight first by getting the huge gelatinous blob in the room out of the way at the very outset, and and you've done a masterful job of uh, broaching the subject. Thank you. So, so I make a I make a song about Vietnam uh, and the great blemish on Kissinger's career. And Kissinger then dies less than 48 hours after I made that fucking song. Well, (laughs) that's what they say. Who do I need to make a song for next? God damn. Does this work? Is this like a Cherokee voodoo curse or something? Well, see, I was, I was kind of wondering that myself because I've been, you know, I have a little, uh, uh, graphic of Hank, uh, on one of the thumbnails for the Saturday night program on Liberty Radio. And, and I've been messing with the opacity on it over the course of uh, a few short months. May- maybe. Maybe that had something to do with it. I don't know. It, it's kind of like uh, on that South Park episode when all the Apple store employees like get in their coven seance and, and all the lasers shoot out of their yeah. Kind of like that, except uh, focusing the voodoo where it needs to be, where it needs to be. Because, you know, unfortunately, 
At this point, the only thing that seems effective in reducing tyranny on the planet is mortality. Um, because God knows these people don't retire and they don't go home. They just stay in office until they grow out. And Lord knows it doesn't matter how many times they stroke out on camera. Exhibit A, Mitch Diane McTurl. Feinstein. Ugh. You, you, you know what? He's next. He, he's got to go next. Who? McTurtle. Oh, yeah, no doubt. I, I think McTurtle. we're past his sell-by date anyway. I know. I, I, how many times that, that poor guy got a stroke out on camera? Right? Ah, yeah. Yeah. Like, how many times does he have to blank in front of the American public before, like, they say, all right, all right, jigs up. Mitch McConnell has been an absolute disaster for Kentucky and the entire country. Absolute disaster. And his protege, the black lawyer, Daniel Cameron, is equally hated by Republicans and Democrats, so much so that by running Daniel Cameron against uh, Steve Bashir's son, once again, nepotism train is still on track. We've got Andy Bashir as governor of Kentucky once again. And uh, my God, I thought Matt Bevins was bad. Jesus Christ. God, the corruption, man. It just, it's so banana republic. It's terrible. But, um, you know, when I, I, I used to get Warren Buffett and Henry Kissinger confused. Oh, yeah. Oh, why? Um, but, uh, you know, no offense to the Oracle of Omaha and Boys Town and pedophilia in general, mm. uh, but offense is intended. Also um, celebrating a passing this week. That's right. Yeah. God damn, we're just checking shit off. We haven't even been on 10 minutes yet. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I can't hit... Um, I can't hit Warren Buffett and not mention the fact that he is the controlling partner of Berkshire Hathaway, the uh, Wall Street venture capital firm, which has the controlling interest in the Burlington Northern Santa Fe Railroad, which is the single largest railroad operating on planet fucking Earth. That is the granddaddy of the six class one railroads, uh, you know, BNSF, Canadian National, Canadian Pacific, Kansas City Southern, CSX, Norfolk Southern, and Union Pacific. Anyways, BNSF, 32 and a half thousand miles, 28 states. Um, you know, and then I think Canadian National has a little over 20,000. Now that CPKC went together, they got about 20,000. CSX, about 15,000. But all told, there's only about 65,000 miles of track left still in use in the United States, where it used to be about 140,000. So, I mean, we've gone from wow, that's 140,000 to 65. Two and a half times what we have now. Uh, so, yeah, we, we've managed to scrap and... Uh, Oh, what do you call it when, when you, we've scavenged, we've scavenged and scrapped our 150-year-old antique railroad network down to the absolute bone. Um, ah, Choo-choo's your sputtering supply chain, Marka. Anyways, that, that's my... I, I every time we do a get fat Carter, I have to turn and take a big shit on the railroad. But, uh, okay, I'm done. I wipe next. Jesus Christ! Oh, oh, and I, I, yeah, of course, the railroads are having to do some extra lifting right now. Why? To get grain down to uh, New Orleans because, because of the Mississippi, the Mississippi River. Uh, ironically, Still? the Mississippi River and the Panama Canal are both at record lows. 
So, like, um, what's up with that? Because we've had uh, a decent amount of rain here in East Texas for, uh, like, the last month. It's right. It's been raining. It's been raining today hard well, at times. Uh, perhaps so, where's, the, where's this water going? Perhaps on the lower Mississippi, from, like, Memphis to New Orleans, might be doing a little bit better, but... Uh, the issue is the majority. I mean, it was bad this time last year. The the majority of the flow that goes into the Mississippi River actually comes from the Missouri Valley Basin, and the whole issue is the fact that the Greater Missouri Valley is in a record multi year uh, long standing drought, uh, and so you know just having a couple of squalls and a couple of tracking storms hitting the Lower Mississippi is not addressing the fact that they're just not getting the output at the mouth of the Missouri River up in St. Louis. So the section of, of the river from St. Louis to Memphis is what's fucking up all of the ra- all of the river traffic. It's so bad now that I know the coal barges, because um, you know, one of my friends uh, works the barges here in Huntington, <laughs> and he said they're using the 10-ton waterway to get down. Because uh, the Mississippi's fucked. And, and, and so uh, the 10 Tom, that's short for the Tennessee Tom Biggie Waterway, uh, which connects Mobile Bay, Alabama to, uh, uh, what is it, like their, uh, oh, shit. Uh, the lake on, it, it, it connects the Tennessee River to the Black Warrior River and the Alabama River down to Mobile Bay. Hmm. Um, And, of course, the Tennessee River then dumps into the Ohio River at Paducah, Kentucky, just up from where the Ohio then empties into the Mississippi at Cairo, Illinois. Um, But the tennessee Tombigee Waterway is an alternative. It's an alternate route to get from St. Louis to the Gulf of Mexico, and it's proving it's paying for itself in spades right now. Mm -hmm. Um, And the canal was completed in the early 1980s, I want to say. But, you know, it it was built as a a second north-south route from the Gulf into the heartland. Um, And now it's being relied upon heavily. Well, it sounds like around. it's doing the job it was built for then. Yeah. Yeah. To, to get around the fact that, you know, the Mississippi River from St. Louis all the way down to the Gulf, <laughs> it doesn't have any locks or dams. Correct. They just build wires and little polder dikes on either side of the river to try to force the current to be a little bit higher. Because the river drops so gradually that they just don't use um, locks and dams. But they've been dredging the fuck out of it, and it's just not doing it enough. I mean, when you look at uh, how many barges they normally lash together and how much of a draft they normally take in the Mississippi compared to what it is now, and the same exact issue is happening uh, with... Uh, transit through the Panama Canal. They can't transit hmm. as many boats. Um, you can't take as many barges lashed together. You can't draft as deep. They've cut the number of ships they can transit through. Um, you know, and that that contrasts greatly with, like, uh, the Suez Canal, on the other hand, where, uh, you know, credit to Egypt, they have been constantly improving and widening and deepening and tanned and they've now tandemized the entire Suez now so that it actually has two complete shipping lanes from start to finish. Um, although there's one section of the Suez Canal where both shipping lanes use the same channel, and that would be the section where the uh, Ever Given hmm. got um, 
turned sideways and completely blocked the Suez Canal. I, I think it was about maybe two years ago when that happened. Yeah, 2021, I believe. Yeah. The yeah. Ever Given, I think it was called. Evergreen. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Evergreen, who is uh, in deep financial trouble right now. That's I just right. saw that their uh, Chicago branch uh, had to uh, do some chapter filing or something to uh, try and get some relief from their overwhelming debt. And, you know, I heard quite a bit of uh, propaganda on the uh, radio today. Shout out 107.3 in Charleston. Um, every hour on the hour, they kept going over statistics of how many billions of dollars that they estimate has been spent since November the 1st and how much they estimate was spent on Thanksgiving and how much they estimate was spent on Black Friday. And even the commentator, after saying that, two or three hours in a row at the top of the hour, after the third time he said, he's like, you know, what was I'm the just record? curious. Um, like he was reading like a top there, like because they've got their little blurb thing, and he, he's going oh, through I got his you, blurb. Got you, got you, yeah, yeah. And then he hits that again at the top of the hour. Station just, break and all funny. that, yeah. Yeah. And after he does it the third time, he's like, you know, just for context, I'm really curious what last number, what last year's numbers were. And are we spending more or less? And I wonder if these higher numbers uh, uh, don't necessarily mean more people are buying more stuff. It could just mean that inflation is worse. Oh, and stuff just costs uh, more. And, and what then a he novel, goes on novel the, idea. He goes into the next thing and he's like, because, you know, with this inflation and, uh, blah, and it goes to dead silence. And then, boom, a song comes on. I'm, like, waiting for the DJ to come back. Mm. And then, like, after two or three songs play, and then they get in fucking Taylor Swift again, come back, and it's a different DJ. Like, oh, oh shit! Oh, no, somebody got in trouble for fucking... Somebody yeah. got in trouble for ripping yeah. on the mic. Somebody's off the uh -oh. air now. Uh oh uh oh Oh, got sheep hooks you said for saying that, that unauthorized word, and now uh, of you're, course you're not we allowed have to, to question action. the propaganda. We're That's just right. giving random facts out of context that aren't even facts. That's don't right. Don't you question it? Don't you question it? I mean, it, it, uh, one hundred seven point three is is the rap channel. That's the channel that plays your R and B and your soul, oh, yeah. and they it's, specifically they call it. They the have all the good channel. commercials. Yeah, yes. that's the Urban Channel. It's it's they probably literally. Uh, so is it what is it? Is it Urban Contemporary? Uh, is it uh, uh, what are the other ones? Um, it's Urban Rhythm and Blues. Urban or uh, Urban R and B and Soul. Ah, all right. Yeah, that, that would be Urban Contemporary. I've they've literally played within the last. I guess it's been about four weeks ago. I heard it again. Backs that thing up. Backs that thing up. CDC is still what? running that shit on black still? radio stations. You're shitting me. We're still fighting COVID. There's still an emergency, wow. buddy. Don't you? Don't you? No, it's not. They ended the emergency. Remember? Don't you fall they off? They signed the, the thing on the camera, and the emergency is over because uh, back then we were a serious country. But we still have emergency use authorization. And they're still murdered. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can still get your shot down at the CVS. Don't worry about it. It's all good. This is America. Now, isn't there a new H1B virus? Or is that a V? Is there? Or, uh, actually, I don't know. Oh. Was there an old one? I don't know. Wait. More than likely, whoever brings in the H1B virus is probably coming into the country on an H1B visa. Hmm. Just going to say. Because, you know, I mean, computer programmers are, are expensive. Code writers are cost a lot of money, you know, and, 
Eh. Why would you? Why would you pay some Warriors schmuck that more. eats Cheetos in Daly City, California, eighty-five grand a year when you can get a poop or whatever his name is from fucking Gujarat? Do the same fucking thing for thirty-five grand. Just pay for the visa. God, you gotta love Silicon Valley. I believe that may be the first time a poop uh, has ever crossed the airwaves here on Liberty Radio. He makes That's, a great slushy. Yeah. Don't knock. Setting precedence. Slushy. Poor guy works three jobs. You know what I'm saying? He'll check you into your room at night. There you anyway. go. Oh, man. But we lost Hank, Henry, Hines, uh, Mr. Kissinger. Uh, if you're nasty. That's right. You can smell him from here. The man from Fort Germany. Oh, I, I, I would believe it. I would believe it. Um, we also lost the the previous day. 99 years of age. You already referenced his business partner, Warren Buffett. Uh, Charlie Munger up and left this mortal coil this week. You know, leaving people to wonder uh, you know, how how much longer for Warren. You know, because there's that whole thing when your partner that you've been you know, with for a long, long, long time, decades even, you know, see each other like every day, I believe. Not anymore. Mm. So what's that going to do? I'm I'm just pitching. I'm just picturing Munger. As a as a cratchit dragging those chains down the stairs here in about three weeks, doing some <laughs> Christmas carol on fucking nine. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah Warren Buffett's gonna wake up Christmas morning, throw up his window, look for the nearest street urchin. You boy, what day is it? That's what's gonna be at, at Warren Buffett's home on Christmas morning. And it's Warren Buffett. Yeah. That sold BNSF to China. 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 The 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 Chinese Communist Party owns the majority stake in BNSF, the single largest railroad in North America. That's oh, uh, shit. that that's the United States and Canada and La Nueva España. You may come. Hmm. Yeah, Eva. You know, I mean. Uh, just look at the proof in the pudding. Uh, Kamala Harris couldn't get poop off the streets. No. Nancy Pelosi couldn't get poop off the streets. Nope. Gavin Newsom with his full Technicolor textured laminated business cards, American Psycho. <laughs> he couldn't get the fucking poop off the streets. But bring in Winnie the Pooh. Uh -huh. yeah. Fucking Xi Jinping yeah. ping pong. And there you go. There it went. Yep. Like, they were like, you all like, got to uh, go now. Like Catherine the Great, landlord is the coming Russian to Empire, expect, got, inspect uh, the property. Uh, Y'all can't be here shitting in the street when he comes through. He, he's our new owner. Here's the question, though. Like, because now he's gone, right? The summit is over. It's done with. He's she's already gone back to China, right? He's back to his honeypot. Where? What did they do with those people? Where are those people? Because they're they're not like they're not trying to to keep the homeless out of San Francisco anymore. They're like, all right, he's gone. You can go back to doing what you were doing. But where are the people? If I what happened to, guess, to them? If I had to guess, I'm gonna say no. Uh, I don't want to guess. I want to know where are these people there were people there before we need he to came look over, for them and we don't know Alameda where those people county. are now i'm gonna guarantee they're in alameda county they just took them and put through them across the bay into oakland maybe and they're probably parked on the side of one of those streets maybe in one of the fifteen thousand rvs that's permanently parked on the sidewalk in oakland Shout maybe out they're California. with the children of lahaina who knows that's the problem. We we don't know. There's also the question. You know, you've you've got like yeah, like well over a thousand 
half dead, half alive San Franciscans just poof vanished into thin air. And then you've got what was it like? The the doctor at um oh shit, which which hospital was it that uh, Israel bombed in Gaza? Well, all of them. Uh, yeah. uh, but uh, and just pick a name. But anyways, the doctor at one of the hospitals that Israel bombed in Gaza was talking about that the IDF came and just took 190-some bodies. They're just gone. And so I'm just waiting to see those bodies lined up in a field somewhere when they claim that. Oh, I'm I'm sure those bodies will get repurposed. I don't think you have to worry about that. They're gonna they're gonna turn up somewhere, Radish. I'm telling you. You know, uh, these people are pretty good at making sure that they use every part of the resource at least a couple of times, usually about ten times. You know. So, what are the chances of us getting a Celine Dion? Justin Bieber duet. Maybe they could do Oh Canada. But I mean, between the both of them, they've at least got one good set of eyes. <laughs> I don't know. I thought, uh, I thought Celine had some sort of like throat thing that happened that like she had to cancel her shows and right, yeah. all of that stuff. Cause like, that was she, after can't, she, she got actually back can't to... sing. It's not that she can't sing, but she actually can't sing. Right. But don't worry, Drizzle, despite the myocarditis and the swelling of the cardiac tissue, Celine assures us that her heart will go on. Oh yeah. I'm sure. Had to get that Titanic joke. That's all right. I forgive you. Damn it! It. I'm, all right. I'm setting the bowl down because I forgot what I was thinking about. I was actually thinking on something, and then I got distracted. Now it's gone. I, I took maybe it'll it to come Canada back. again. I, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> or, or as our friend Death the Tyrants would say, "Fook around and find dude." What are you talking about? Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Or sometimes, as you say... To find out more, fuck around. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I always have I am working on the, uh, the the theme song to get That's back what it harder. was. That's what it was. That's what I wanted to ask you about. Because, again, this is now the seventh episode, officially, uh, of Get Fact Harder. And uh, that means that it's becoming like a regular thing. And so, like, it should probably have regular series things attached to it like intros and outros and you know whatever other shit we can come up with i was about two-thirds done with it and all of the sudden i was motivated inspired called by the almighty to literally just drop everything that i was working on and dive head first into some traditional cambodian and vietnamese zithering music um and for those that aren't familiar with the zither um it's also known as the uh don bao don bao or zither uh, you have to say it like that too um hmm. but it, it's 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 basically like one string it's got this little uh like stick uh, sticking out of one end of the string that you put your hand on so you can then manipulate the pitch. It's the same thing as like a pitch wheel on the side of a keyboard where you can go woo, 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 and, you know, zither the pitch. Um, and so I went from working on our uh, theme song here for Get Fact Harder to zithering in the rice fields with a beautiful conical hat. Um, and then that led me to, you know, when I got the zithering and everything down, um, and I already had a song at the beginning that I sampled called um, Saigon Lam Cup. I don't know, my, my, Vietnam, my Vietnamese is kind of rusty. Um, but, uh, you know, when I got done with the song, 
And I, I, I saved it. And then I went back to work on the thing. And I was like, shit, it's missing something. It's missing something. I mean, I'm talking about Saigon. This is when the Americans lost epically in Vietnam. And everybody watched it on TV. Holy cow. Like, is, is this what you're talking about? Yes. That's oh, it. Shit. It's a big wow. fucking bamboo stick. It's it's a big thing of bamboo with one string and then a little stick that you like. Wow. And that's that. That's that, crazy. That, that, that Vietnamese music. Do, do, yeah. Do, do. I just went, I went and looked for a uh, Cambodian zither and looked for an image that sounded like what you were talking about. And that's this, there this it is. what came up. Yeah. That's it. Hashtag the Cambodian search zither. it up. And so I, I go to start working on it. I downloaded um, your audio from your interview with um, Kodomo-san, a.k.a. Yeah. James Corbett. Nice. Um, I think I was on point for that one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and so I was getting clips from that. And then literally, as I'm, I'm thinking, like, you know what? I think I'm going to put Corbett in our intro, too. And so I'm doing the Corbett, and I'm like, well, I'm gonna put Corbin in there. I gotta, I gotta bring in James Evans Lotto somewhere too. You know, what I'm saying it's gonna be a hodgepodge of, of, because that's what we do. We make collages. It's like a thumbnail. You know, you're, mm-hmm. you're, you're just sprinkling everything in there, and then boom, it hit me out of nowhere. Shit. Because it, it, it was when I was thinking about Corbett when I remembered Tokyo Rose, because during World War II, the Imperial Japanese. Uh, propaganda department mm-hmm. used Tokyo Rose yeah. to talk to the GIs during the Pacific campaign. Uh, and then that immediately made me think of Hanoi Hanna. Because the Vietnamese did the same thing that the Japanese did with Tokyo Rose. So then that led me like, okay, all right, all right, all right. I got to put Hanoi Hanna on the song. So I went back very last thing I did, I, I added in Hannah and Hannah. Well, now when I listen to that song, Sigh, It's Gone, Hannah and Hannah makes the fucking song. Oh, yeah. yeah. Without her on that song, it's not even the same thing. No, not it's, even close. Hannah and Hannah is the fun phenomena. Yeah. Man. Well, we cutting edge yeah. propaganda. So we played that Manufacturing last night. reality. Yeah. yeah. And we played that last night, folks that tuned in for the new music potluck. Number 20. I'm kind of surprised it's gotten that far. Uh, wow. But yeah, we played that. If you uh, if you weren't there live, you can always check out the replay. It's uh, up on the channel. But there was you know, that. I, I don't drink often, but next Wednesday when we do the 21st potluck. Wow. Well, definitely. Do you think there's going to be a 21st next week? There. The, I don't know if it'll be next week, but there's going to be a 21st new music potluck. Oh, there, yeah, definitely there will be. I just don't know if it's going to be next week. It's going to happen. And when it know. happens, I didn't even. There's going to oh, be it's drink. Thursday, so there's nothing new out today. Just odd stuff on a Thursday. But so you released that this week, and then also within the last week, a brand new five track EP of Dr. Dennis and Deadfella featuring DJ Hyona. That's right. Title of Initiation. Oh, I love that song. That dropped. Well, that's the, that's the name of the EP is Initiation. Yeah. Yeah. Man, five that was a brand good song. new tracks from Dr. Dennis, Deadfella, and the Yona. Ladies and gentlemen, link will be in your replay notes. Man. So how did that come together? There, there's all kinds of stuff and in, in going on now and, and things are picking up again. You know, I, I kind of <laughs> had, had to take a break with the, having the babies and everything. And, no, and babies will do digging that Digging down deep and, you know, scrounging up for money. But now I got my head back above water and Oh, and, and a quick note about last night. Uh, I just wanted to send uh, my heartfelt thanks and gratitude once again to um, uh, Angry Tiger and everyone on the panel there at the Angry Tiger Den last night. 
with, with my friends Franco and Jason and Angus and uh, oh, what's her name, Catherine, and uh, OP was there as well. Um, and uh, it was uh, basically an open discussion about religion. Because, um, you know, growing up, you're told that you shouldn't really talk about politics and religion. You're not going to make many friends. And yet, interestingly right. enough, the more I talk politics and religion, the more, the more friends I make. The more friends I make. So, yeah. It's interesting <laughs> but, you know, how that works. I don't know, so how was that? Like an adult conversation. It, it was, it was a, an adult conversation amongst adults, um, which was refreshing considering how much we are constantly infantilized in speech and, and just spoken down to. Well, for example, um, oh, hey, what's up, Biscotti? Um, I think now when they give speeches on Capitol Hill that they actually write their speeches to a sixth grade level now just to make sure that everyone will understand the words they're using. I don't want to use too big of words and stuff. Because, I mean, God forbid you, you, you confuse politics as just... Um, as your meme said, theater for the poor. Hmm. <laughs> Yona is um, always high, Dylan. Yeah. Siempre. Uh, yeah, he's going to want to know how high I am. High. Hmm. All right, well, you let him know I'll in a minute. I want to hear more about this uh, uh, Tiger Den uh, get together thing. Yeah. So like, what, is, what did y'all discuss? Well, um, basically each person on the panel was pretty much speaking for one of the major religions. And so I was asked on as a panel to speak to shamanism and animism and, you know, native <laughs> American spirituality take. And then we had one speaking for, uh, you know, born again Christians. We had one, um, Franco, uh, uh, adopted Islam and was, uh, speaking to that during the discussion. Um, OP was speaking to, uh, like, um, oh, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Wicca, Wicca or Wiccan practice and stuff like, you know, cards and candles and all that stuff. Um, but more, moreover, we were getting deeper into the messaging, uh, and then it kind of led to, of course, you know, talking about how organized religion is weaponized for war causes and everything else. And, and in fact, you know, then that led to the discussion about the ongoing, uh, uh, genocide taking place, uh against the Gazans uh, at the hands of the uh, Zionist state. Uh, and that was discussed as, you know, that topic came up. Is that a religious war? Is that Jews versus Muslims? And I said, well, as much as Mossad and Hasbro would want you to believe that, it's actually not the case. And when you look at uh, protest against what the Zionists are doing, some of the loudest and most vehement protest is actually coming from other Jews, like mm -hmm. uh, what's their group called? J a Jewish, a Jewish Voice for Peace. Mm -hmm. uh, I know I've heard of them. Um, and you know, I think of like Norman Finkelstein, who, uh, if you've not seen Norman Finkelstein before, um, he's got videos out all over. I, I would recommend you watch Norman Finkelstein on YouTube. That way, you can watch him at. Um, one quarter speed because if you've not seen Norman Finkelstein before, you'll talker? know that he's a really fast talker. Mm. Really fast. You gotta slow him down. Makes me wonder but if that's genetic, you know, because Shapiro's a fast talker, but whatever. I'm I'm sure I'm gonna catch heat for that. And and then someone's actually gonna it's a go legitimate do that, question. And then though. they're gonna cuss me. They're going to cuss yeah. me when they find out the jokes on them. Oh, but anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. moving anyway. on. Moving on. 
<laughs> so I'm wondering why Biscotti was late. It, it, not, well, then again, you know, he, he may have had to, you know, most states have like special lights for pedestrians to cross the street at, at the stoplights, you know, yeah. crosswalk signal. Yeah. Um, but in Connecticut. To tell you when you're supposed to cross the street. When in you Connecticut, are, they have. I'm sorry. When you are allowed to right. cross the street. Otherwise, it would be jaywalk. Correct. But, but in Connecticut, they have cross Which is fire signals. Illegal. So, like, if you're going down the street and you see the crossfire signal come on, stop until you don't hear gun reports anymore, and then the signal should go off, and you can drive again without catching any bullets. Because Connecticut really dangerous. Uh, Dylan's triggered really now. I, he's the one. Every time I, he tells me a story about Connecticut, it's more guns and more guns, and there was another shooting. And gosh, so scary. Yeah, but can you believe that that's where we are in America in 2023? We have laws on the books that tell you how you are and are not allowed to cross the street. Mm -hmm. Think about that, folks. The good news is if you're legally using the crosswalk and you've got the signal and somebody runs you over and kills you, they broke the law. And, you know, you're dead. So yeah. maybe, you should, maybe, you should, maybe you'll should maybe you think about driving. <laughs> anyway. Uh, you know... Fun fact, according to the National Transportation Safety Bureau, the NTSB, um, pedestrian fatalities are at an all-new record-setting high in the United States after they really? have gone down, which we talked about this on an earlier episode of Get Back Order. I believe we did. Uh, you know, whether so it's distracted driving or distracted pedestrians for a multitude of reasons. Mm -hmm. Um, more and more, it, it, it's, it's a quite a dangerous thing across the road. You can look both ways, but, um, it may not matter. Oh, wow. You may just get killed anyways. Um, did Dylan you see says, that video, what? uh, in San Francisco? I think it was where two San Francisco cops pulled up behind a, uh, driverless vehicle. Um, I think Death to Tyrant posted that video, but I don't think like, I did pull see up that. behind it. I'm a little and, upset you know, that I haven't seen and that. It, it had the stuff that sounds on funny. the roof that kind of looks like the stuff that, like, on the Google car that does the street view stuff. Yeah, but yeah, it's got yeah. all these sensors. I know what you're talking it. about. It wasn't that camera, but it was, anyways, it had all the shit on the top. And right, right. Sensors so it can on the see side, in every direction right. in like five different wavelengths, and yeah. And so it's waiting to pick somebody up there. Well, the cops pull up behind it because it's got its blinkers on and it's next to cars that are parked on the curb. So it's what not seems to be the trouble, the buddy. <laughs> cops go up and there's nobody in the driver's seat. They can't figure out what to do. And there's a cop on the passenger side. There's a cop on the driver's side. And as they're both scratching their head, trying to figure out what to do, the fucking car takes off and starts driving down the road. Oh, they freak out. Hey, 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 they both jump in their car and, oh, and of course the car pulls off at like three miles an hour and it's just they could have outran the thing but they ran back to their cars and, and they get in their cars and they drive their cars across the intersection about 20 feet to where the car stops again why or now they've both got their billy clubs out oh you're right, shit you me. driverless car we don't have anybody to pull out and beat right now, so we might just start beating on this car, robot car. You're kidding We're me, cops. right? Like you're putting me on right now. We we will get a link to the video. It, oh my Dylan god! Knows it. This isn't Grand Theft Auto, folks. This isn't a video game. <sighs> Who are Lord. cops supposed to beat up when there's no driver in the car? Well, the car. I, I know, obviously. It, it, I would be so mad if I didn't have a motor have to, to beat, beat somebody half to death. or something. I, you know what? You're getting it, rear view mirror. You're getting it, buddy. 
And I'm going to poke this you right know, through your signal, too. Fuck you. I, I would like to say that I I don't believe that cops are that stupid, but I I can't do that and continue to look at myself in the mirror. So I won't say it. Thank you so much, Death and Tyrant, for sharing that video. Oh, yeah. And thank you for the hoodie, too, uh, When whenever it, it comes. I'm, I'm not, I don't know. I talked to Ryan. I did. I promise. I still don't understand what's going on, but it's all good. Yeah, I can't wait for Ryan Christian to do a deep dive on that epicyte herpes corn that Rank Cass was telling him about the other day. That that was a fun exchange. What, what was up with that? Because I uh, I came in I think on the tail end of that. I'm not I'm not sure I actually understand what he was saying. Like there's there's like some corn that'll make you sterile, but it doesn't give well, like it gets rid of your herpes or something. Well, now now don't get your corns mixed up. There's sterility yeah, corn see, and there's I herpes don't... corn. <laughs> You know, just like there's white corn, there's yellow corn, there's blue corn, there's popcorn, there's corn pop, who is a bad dude. You know, I mean, there's all kinds of corn. <laughs> uh, but, the, you know, um, Rand started talking about the corn, and I don't know how the wires got crossed with Ryan, but it turned into one of those funny bot awkward moments on air that the kind of My moments bad. on air that you just live for it's <laughs> good uh, i might have to go back and rewatch it i'm gonna uh, definitely have to go back and rewatch the final hour today uh when sam was on oh my god dylan just said that uh his parents friend got killed earlier this month in a hit and run yeah didn't I say that? I thought I said that. Yeah, yeah. I probably didn't say that. I saw it, though. Probably a stolen yeah. vehicle. Oh, I did see something exciting last night. Or, well, technically this morning. It would have been at 3.45 this morning so on AM. U.S. Route 23 at Westwood Road in Boyd County, Ashland, Kentucky, there was a pickup truck that was on fire. Oh, nice. Uh, I mean, it was the middle of the night. And it, it, was one of those good, uh, it was one of those good terrorist uh, pickup trucks, too. The, the Toyota with the, you know. Yeah. Like the, it, it, was the, it was the ISIS. It was the Toyota ISIS. God, I would love to have one of those. <laughs> Anyway, They're so awesome I'm, I'm trucks, gassing man. up. And, you know, I, I'm like, I'm at the gas pump, and between me and the truck is the Aldi's, um, which is a grocery store, and there's the Aldi's, uh, and then the intersection there. And so I can see the flames coming up from the engine. And damn it, right when I get done pumping my gas, and I go to walk in to pay for it, as I walk into the gas station and the door closed behind me, I hear Boom! And I literally saw my shadow against the wall from the fireball and turn around just to see the end of the fireball. And I, I ran back outside and all the other people out of the pumps that are gasping their cars like, wow, that guy's gas tank just blew the fuck up. Oh, wow. How far from like, the gas know, station was it? Uh, uh, about 500 feet. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Um, and, uh, and so then when I went to leave and I went to drive across the Aldi's parking lot, there was actually shit that had fallen into the parking lot when it blew up. That was pretty cool. And then, and then I thought, you know, Joe Biden's America folks, maybe I should stop and get out and film it because when, when I got up by the car wash, pull out on the road, you know, there's like 12 fire trucks there's got to be 20 comps out there it's in the middle of the night i thought that's a great time I, I could park and get out and act like i'm one of those auditors with my phone and then i thought well i am making money right now and i'm smoking weed and i reek of weed and cops really don't 
like being filmed. Even yeah. though you're right. Yeah. Even though it's your constitutional right. You, well, yeah. You have every right to fuck with the cops if you want to, auditors. But um, you poke the bear and you wrestle the bear. So, yep. you know, that's how yep. it works. At that point, you are guilty until proven innocent. Yeah. And there is a system for proving you innocent, and it is not quick. And they know that. So, yeah. And I also have Probably a good um, call. I'm thinking that was a good new call. Segment, brand new segment we're going to debut tonight. The old lady said. The old That's lady the said. The old lady said. Because every now and then, old the old lady? lady will bring me by my wife. Better oh. half. Oh, oh, the, okay. The, the groundhog lady. woman. Ogana, the one that has five kids in five years. Um, Impressive. And, and so this segment is called The Old Lady Said. Because, you know, she'll pull me aside every now and then. It's like, hey, did you hear about? No, I didn't. Oh, well, so in this week's version, in this week's um, The Old Lady Said, Apparently, Miss Dolly Parton played live during halftime. And uh, Drizzle, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say she's got to be 74. Well, we're going to find out. I'm going to say she's pushing 80. Uh, and we're going to find out for sure. But keep going. I guess, I guess 74. But we're going to keep going with this. Um, Help us out there, audience, the actual age of Dolly Parton. Oh, no, but, I'm um, going to find it. Don't worry. So anyways, she gets done with her performance. Yeah, and, and, you know, unlike Cher. Oh, thank goodness. Wikipedia is not for sale. I know everyone is relieved. Go ahead. Oh, good. You can give money, too, if you really want to. Be a sucker. Um, so unlike Cher or T-Pain, who have used the auto tune and all that other shit that you know Beato pointed out? Um, huh. All right, we're going to split Park. the difference. We're going to split the difference. She is seventy-seven, born January nineteenth, nineteen forty-six. That means she is a Capricorn. Wow. I believe. I believe. Well, she's kind of on the cusp there since it's the nineteenth, so she's not fully Capricorn. She's kind of Capric. What did that be? Capricorn Aquarius. I don't know. Oh my God. Doing a little thing there. So my mom, my mom is two years older than Dolly Parton. My mom was Holy also two shit. years older than Dolly Parton. My mom was also born in 44. That's interesting. Holy shit. Yeah. Oh my God. Now my so, mom so, did not have nearly as much plastic surgery as Dolly Parton has had. So that that's that. So the, the reason why the old lady pulled me to the side, told me about Dolly Parton was the fact that she's catching so much shit on social media and Facebook and, and elsewhere. Rightly so. Uh, for wearing like Lycra body suits. Yeah. That's flesh colored to cover up her wrinkles and everything. But, you know, her, her singing was fine. Her guitar playing was fine. They were just bitching about her wearing this thing that was covering her wrinkly old 77 year old skin. And people were pissing and bitching and moaning about it. And, and the why, thing why? my old lady said was Why were they bitching if, about it? She said, if Dolly Parton had not worn that, then they all would have bitched about, ew, ugly. How could she yeah. go up there with all those wrinkles? Well, yeah. They would have found anything else to bitch about. That's how the whole crabs in a bucket syndrome works. But you the just best latch part onto is anything that you can to tear somebody down and bring them back down to your level. Dolly responded. Oh, shit. Dolly did respond to it. You know, Dolly's, uh, she's like high up MK ultra handler. Oh yeah. Like she's, she ain't, she ain't somebody to be playing around with. I'll tell you that. She uh, she responded and said, you know, I've paid good money for everything I've got. She's never been squeamish or timid about sharing the fact of all the different plastic surgeries and boob mm -hmm. jobs yeah. and everything else she's, she's got. Had her she's, breasts been enlarged. Very, she's had her breasts very, reduced. She's had them enlarged again. She's yeah. been very, very open about it. 
Um, and I'm really glad she got another facelift because there was uh, a period of time from about four years ago until about three years ago where she had had a bad surgery. Mm -hmm. She looked like fucking Skeletor for almost a solid year. Um, thank God they fixed it. Hmm. But uh, 77 years old. Well, I thought 74. So I, well, again, not everything on that body is 77 years old, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you know, I'm going to say, well, actually, I don't know. I was, I, I was about to say, surely to God, Dolly Parton has not used the high-grade North Korean powdered dead baby. Maybe. But I can't rule it out. I can't, can't rule I, it I out. I cannot, can neither confirm nor nope. deny that. Nope. Sorry, John Kirby. We just don't you know. know. That, that that's one of the wonder. unknown unknowns. Makes me wonder how old Madonna is. So I'm going to find Ooh. out. I'm going to find Murdana. out. Madonna. Good old Murdana spawning like a sturgeon for the very last time. Ooh. 65. So uh, Louise Ciccone still has uh, a little bit uh, to go to catch up to Dolly. Although, you know, you know, if if we're just Dolly going by like way matches on than the uh, the plastic surgeon belt, Dolly Madonna, Madonna way might have something on uh, on Dolly. Ooh. I don't know. She she's got to get a better surgery though. Ooh man, Madonna's scary to me anymore. Ooh, and I, I like she seafood. looks she looks like a doll from a horror movie. Like, she doesn't oh. even look human anymore. And not even like a hot doll, like Bride of Chucky. Just like, ugh. What, what if, all right, what if these people that keep getting the plastic surgery that literally, like, change the the shape of their their face, their, their body, whatever, like, they can literally, like, over time, create a completely different visage for people to see? I, what if they really are vampires and live longer than than the average human being? And this is just them, you know, making their way through the world so that they can kind of slip through unnoticed, hide in plain sight, so to speak. I'm, I'm going to have to point out the 400-pound gorilla clone in the corner of the room. Because oh, yeah. The last in word In addition that, to the uh, gelatinous blob? Uh, well, the last thing the old lady mentioned after the whole Dolly Parton thing was, as as the as the parting quip as she goes out the door, she says, "By the way, what happened to Jamie Foxx's head tattoo?" Blew my fucking mind. Hmm. Never underestimate the old lady, gentlemen. She knows way more than you than you even think. She the women are paying attention, men. So should you. Where is Jamie Foxx's head tattoo? That was the $25,000 question she laid in my lap last night. Because, yeah, you know, for those that don't know, Jamie Foxx, um, huge, huge fucking tattoo across the back of his skull from one ear to the other. And poof, it's gone. Is it possible that he could have gotten it removed? I guess because they can do that now. They yeah. can they can remove a tattoo, and it, you'll never even know that there was ever one there. I mean, surely they're not actually cloning humans. Surely they just cloned sheep and other things. Yeah, almost yeah. thirty years ago. Yeah, I I don't put anything past these motherfuckers. I absolutely are think they are cloning humans. <laughs> Would not surprise me at all, because, again, it seems like in order to get to the highest levels of power, you have to be like a, a severely deviant pedophile, right? Like, that's the only way you climb the ladder. So just kind of stands to reason that at some point, one of those people is going to be like, well, I got all this money and I got all this technology. Fuck, I'll just make me some kids. I do you remember when with the general public anymore? Do you remember when the hunt was on 
for Saddam Maybe that's Hussein. what Epstein was doing. And and it turns out they, that Saddam Hussein was allegedly finally tracked down to a spider hole in the ground where they found him hiding in the ground like a worm. And then they had a mock trial and hung Saddam Hussein. But the reason why I bring up the former bogeyman of Iraq and former CIA <laughs> man, <laughs> CIA trained him and put him in Iraq again with the overthrow of the government. Anyway, uh, we'll go into the path of shit later. Uh, but I mentioned Saddam Hussein because that was the first time I remember seeing on CNN where they did a deep dive on all of Saddam Hussein's clones. That Saddam Hussein had all of these different body doubles. Yeah. And they were so good, you couldn't tell which one was the real Saddam Hussein. And then later they ran a similar story like that about uh, uh, Muammar Gaddafi in Libya, saying that, you know, Gaddafi had body doubles, but they weren't as good as Saddam's body doubles. You can kind of tell this guy has a different nose, this guy. But, all right, so, so that was, you know, years ago. Now you look at some of these pressers where Biden shows up and it's like, well, which what kind of ears is he going to have this time? What kind of forehead is he going to have this time? Uh, I mean, how am I how the, bigger is am I the only one going to be today? It? Yeah, like, surely I'm not the only one noticing. Like, how did, dude, seriously, I, when that happened, the first thing that popped into my mind was this has to be a troll. This this is literally the 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 fucking predator class trolling everybody. Yeah. Like, look yeah. at this motherfucker right here with testicles on his chin. I just you can't know what? get over the fact. I don't I think half the country the even noticed. They're just you know. I, sad to say, I think the majority of people are still just so economically desperate and going along to get along. Um, although, where we used to be just a tiny fraction of a minority, we're the minority majority now. And in and, and so much as those demanding truth, those asking questions, those that uh, just won't shut up and go away anymore. And uh, the discontent is growing as the mm -hmm. propaganda fails more and more epically to the point that any, I, I'm safe in saying, I feel safe in saying anyone 50 years of age or younger in this country at this point ain't buying a shit no more. Really, the only people that are still playing along with this crap at this well, point there's, there's plenty are Nana of people over that people. age that aren't buying it either. Right. I was actually, well, I was talking to uh, Kanoko's mom uh, yesterday. She stopped by the house, and I don't know exactly how old she is. I know he's a little bit younger than I am, so, you know, I imagine she's over 50. Uh, mm -hmm. Never, obviously, never want to assume a woman's age by her appearance. Uh, put that in your back pocket, gentlemen. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, she's she's not buying the mainstream garbage at all. By and large, the single largest demographic left in this country that is still down for Israel, that is still watching CNN and Fox News, is the baby boomers. It, it is a generational divide. Like that one guy uh, with the... Uh, the leaked audio of the lawyer for ADL, Jonathan Greenblatt, where he said it's not a right or left issue, it's a generational divide. Uh, and pretty much everyone in the United States, 50 years and younger, they're not buying the Hasbro anymore. It's just not working on them. It's only working on Peepaw and Nana. Hmm. Um, but, you know, I, to... to to be fair, yeah, there are plenty of baby boomers that aren't buying into it. I'm just saying that, be that as it may, generationally speaking, <laughs> of those that are still down for it, that's the largest cohort in terms of age group. 
Because again, yeah, well, I mean, there, it, there's a lot of idiots that are under the age of 52 that are going into it. I mean, I, well, absolutely. I've seen, I've I mean, seen shit lips on Marshall campus that are not even 20 years of age wa- wearing fucking Biden Harris t shirts. Like, yeah. Well, I mean, that's that's what the the Democrats tend to get is the low information voter. Because the longer you live in this country, on this planet, the more you come to understand that it is an entirely rigged game from start to finish. You know, you can't, I don't, I don't understand uh, unless you're just dumb, right? Like you just, you, you can't, you don't have the ability to put two and two together. You've just been real damn lucky your whole life. Uh, Maybe, maybe it's, you know, why the people that like you, like you so much might be something to think about, but I don't see how you can get to age 50 in this world as somebody who is not born into a privileged situation and, and think that, you know, uh, we're, we're somehow all in this big system based on merit, right? Like with with everything that you've been through in your life up to that point, that you think that any of this is legitimate. I don't, I don't understand how a person can do that. I just don't. I want to give a shout out to instigator in the odyssey chat who says I'm 60. We have an instigator and I, and I haven't bought this shit for over 30 years. Yeah. Kudos to you. Kudos to you. Again, that's (laughs) just the media that we get fed that we're supposed to believe what what this group is is uh, all about from what the the talking TV box tells us. Well, uh, they're still saying on the TV that the majority of Americans got the first dose, and nearly half of Americans got the second dose of the vax. And I don't, yeah, and I don't believe it. I don't believe. It. No, it's, it's all marketing. It's all marketing. Public relations. I don't, I don't know how it is that they're gaming those numbers. Like, I don't know, like, what exact mechanism it is that they're using, but those numbers are not legit. There's no way. I, I can tell you just in my, uh, my experience with people since the shots started rolling out, uh, didn't talk to my sister about it, so I don't know. Uh, but the majority of people that I know and have talked to and have interacted with, they didn't get it. The people who did get it are in the minority, and in my network, it's a severe minority. And the sad thing is, you know, as a result of my work where I do DoorDash and Uber every day, um, you know, I'm in and out of every store, restaurant, department store all day long, every day. And I, I can't help but notice. I'm going to say at least roughly about one out of 10, sometimes maybe one out of five. So we're talking between 10 and 20 percent of the employees at these different places in the service industry, whether we're talking Target or Walmart or Home Depot or Office Depot or Applebee's or O'Charlie's or, you know, whatever. Um, Between 10 and 20% of the employees there are still masking and wearing gloves and just completely fucking scared to death of being around all these people in public and customers and, you know, to, to keep, the key, and so it's like you can literally see the people in the room that are living in the lizard state of mind of just constant panic and chaos. There is no balance. There is no peace. It's just yeah. freak the fuck out from the moment you wake up till the moment you go to sleep. Try Pretty not much. to breathe in too deep because other people are breathing goofies into the air Uh. they they live their lives with swollen amygdalas as uh the pod father and john c dvorak would say yeah shout out no agenda (laughs) and big shout out to send value uh, some way man i don't want to be a douchebag come on i gotta send a special shout out to six and tom cooper at and 
Oh. The new prisoner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, here, check this out, right? So, uh, Mike the Polymath, uh, one of the hosts, and in my opinion, the most fantastic host of the WTF Forum, uh, which you can uh, view on the Easy Peasy Podcast channel on YouTube every Sunday night, right before the Grand Theft World. Uh, he is actually going to a No Agenda meetup this weekend in which the podfather, Adam Curry himself, is wow. rumored to be in attendance. Uh, so <coughs> I may now... Uh, be able to claim like one degree of separation from Adam Curry if uh, all goes as planned. <coughs> That's fucking awesome. Yeah, man. I can't wait to go to another meetup myself. I, I got so much out of that last time getting to go down there and hang out with Craig Pasta Jardula and Ryan Christian and, and so many others too. Um, Honestly, no offense to, to, to Pasta and Ryan, but there's this one guy that I had, I must have had five, six different brief conversations. Every time it was about 10, 15 minutes, and we just laughed. And I mean, uh, I, I can't say enough about this guy. Um, his pen name is Etienne Laboite. Um, and that guy, Howard. Him and um, my other buddy that was there, uh, Chris Youngblood, man, we had such fun. Because, you know, it's, it's one thing to sit there and, you know, and online chats and stuff, but it's just totally different when you're having a conversation in real life and you got the gestures and everything. It's just a whole different um, vibe and atmosphere. And, and ultimately, I think that's where all of this is going, you know, more meetups and stuff like that, um, which I... I suppose eventually I could try to host some type of meetup in West Virginia. Um, it's just, you know, when it comes to doing regional meetups in this country, the United States is fucking huge. And yeah. travel can get expensive because there's just not many travel options in the United States as compared <laughs> to traveling in any other country. Uh, they're getting narrower by the day. You can take Greyhound, but the Greyhound network is terrible. You can take uh, Amtrak, but the Amtrak network is terrible. You can book with Spirit Air or Allegiant Air, but I regret to inform that your flight's already been canceled. So maybe you should walk. Yeah, that's another thing. Think too. about walking. Uh, I have a I have a pretty uh, strong <laughs> feeling that one of the things that we're going to see in 2024 is I know we're not quite to the point of being able to cast some predictions for the next year yet. But I'll, I'll go ahead and throw it in there. It's uh, end of November. We're about to kick over. Next year, air travel, uh, it's probably going away. If not severely reduced. I don't understand how the airline industry ever survived this long. I can't Government think of subsidies. any other... I can't think of anything that has been more bloated with constant subsidies. And when you mm -hmm. think about how much use people get out of the passenger terminals and the runways and everything else, and I've never, ever, 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 ever heard anyone say, well, how are you going to pay for that? When it comes to fixing up a nice passenger terminal for the professional managerial class that uses the airport system. But That's because nobody cares how it gets paid for. They just want it done. But, you know, the vast majority of working poor Americans, the only time they ever go to an airport is to pick up some member of the family that's flying on an airplane for the first time in their life. I mean, it, it just, I, honestly, I'd like to know how many of the 333 million Americans in this country, how many actually have a passport and use it every year? That's a good question. I don't How have a passport, Americans so have, I didn't have the opportunity to use it. Or, or perhaps the better question is, how many Americans that were born in the United States never leave the country? 
that would be interesting to know. Because, and, and of course, for those Americans that do leave, as, as you and I would know when we were overseas, uh, there's well, a I certain wasn't overseas. Type, I was over land. Over land, but yeah. out, out of the United States proper and, and encountering Americans in a foreign country. And the vast majority of Americans that leave the United States and go visit somewhere else, they would rather eat McDonald's and Taco Bell and shop at the Walmart. Or, oh my God, look, honey, Acapulco has a Kentucky Fried Chicken. Oh, thank God. Yeah, they do. Oh, thank yeah. God. Same thing in Germany, same thing in France. You know, all the Americans mm -hmm. piling in on the Rue de Rivoli, where all the fancy fucking boulangerie or bakeries. Shit. Yeah. I'll, I'll try to keep it in English here. Pardon my French. Yeah, and, I can tell um, you, down in Costa Azul, uh, there was a Walmart. Walmart Supercenter, and right in front of the Walmart Supercenter was Domino's Pizza. Yeah. Yep. And, and there so was it's a KFC. Like, you're in Mexico. Why wouldn't you get Mexico? You're, or you're in Germany. Why wouldn't you get some real fucking German beer? Stuff? Why are you trying to buy Budweiser? You're in Italy. Why are you asking for ketchup? Well, what the fuck is wrong with you? You're in Italy. You don't part, ask for ketchup in Italy. It's part Fucking of Americans. getting all of the. No. It, yes. Uh, American uh, consumer culture is what was exported to the rest of the world. But it was uh, in effort of building a monoculture among mm -hmm. all the various prosperous countries in the world so that. Yes, you're correct. If you go from uh, the United States to Mexico to Germany to Japan uh, to Egypt even, right? If you go to any of the major cities, you're going to find pretty much all the same amenities. It's all going to look the same. It's going to be familiar, right? So you're going to have an easy time getting around and all of that stuff. And again, There's it's all in service of getting us the... all to the same point, which is one world. Yeah. Good global governance, Drizzle. More consolidation, please. But, you know, I think about from the surveying and engineering perspective, mm -hmm. when I look at the uh, freeways, I'm always interested to see how different countries treat intersections that are grade separated with freeways and access roads and what type of on-ramp off-ramp combinations they come up with but moreover when you think about countries across the world every country now has a four-lane road mm -hmm. virtually every country on the planet earth somewhere they have an actual freeway intersection with on ramps and off ramps and clover leaves and all that good shit. <laughs> the difference is in the United States, I'm going to say about easily 90% of all the freeway interchanges in the United States are diamond interchanges. And mm -hmm. at least Every other exit off the interstate in the United States of America has got a fast food joint and a gas station on it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it, it's to the point now that if you're on a road trip and somebody else is driving and you wake up as you're descending the off ramp off of the freeway and you look up and you see the big, big signs that are, you know, 200 feet into the air so they can be seen from the interstate. Right. And you see the signs for, La Quinta Inn, mm -hmm. Denny's, McDonald's, Taco Bell, Loves. Exxon, BP, Shell. And you're like, where the fuck are we? Because that's every exit. Yeah, That's every town, every county, yeah. every state, every city, all across Dude, the again, United States. I spent... Uh, Monoculture. I Monoculture. spent three years in the 1990s, the late 90s traveling all across the country selling magazines 
going into neighborhoods, going into shopping malls, going into plazas, going on college campuses, looking at everything all across the country. And guess what? It all looked the fucking same. All the plazas looked the same. All the shopping malls looked the fucking same. All the schools looked the fucking same. Monoculture. But it's not like that in Europe. Not that they don't have chains. I mean, that there's S.O. and others. There it is. Briar Rose makes an appearance. The stars at night are big and bright. Deep in the heart of Texas. Woo-hoo! That's right. Uh, but I can't see them tonight because they've been spraying. Oh, yeah, dude, it was it was pretty. It. I say, um, you know, people talk about these sorts of topics online. I'm sure uh, YouTube will find a reason to strike this video at some point. You know, it might be 2026, 2027 when it happens, but whatever. Uh, but yeah. They were spraying heavy here yesterday. Like I went for uh, just went for a quick walk to get my heart rate up yesterday afternoon, and like it was obvious that these were not clouds. Like it was like this milky white sheen on the sky. And, like, and they always put it on. in your face because you'll see them all in parallel lines and then they'll go back and start flying perpendicular lines. Yeah. So you literally have like uh, oh, okay. Cartesian grid graph grid pattern yeah. over your fucking head. God damn it. So I wanted to point out um, in your particular neck of the woods, you're on the original homeland of the Caddo tribe which was situated between the Coahuilas, who are down by like Tamaulipas, and uh, the Natchez mm. and the Washitas, who are on the other side, up toward like Malvern and Hot Springs and Arkadelphia into Arkansas, um, other side of Texarkana. But right there around Texarkana, Longview, Marshall, Jasper, getting down almost to like Beaumont where you're getting into the Cahota Nation, the Cahota tribe. But the Caddo's <laughs> right there around Texarkana and, and Jasper where you're at there, when the Spanish first came into the area and they met the Caddo up there, the Caddo uh, introduced the Spanish to their word for amigos or friends. And the word for friends in the Caddo language is Tejans. Hmm. Tejans. And Tejans became Tejas in Spanish. Tejas in Caddo. Tejas in Spanish became Texas in Merkin. And that's the Caddo word for friends. How many of us have them? There you go. There's your etymolo- et- etymological moment of the night. Nice. All right. So we got to talk about this. Um, oh, Instigator did bring up the Texas on and off ramps. We will mm-hmm. get back to that. Back to you, Drizzle. Yeah. We'll get back to that. Fortunately, I haven't had to spend much of my life driving in Texas. I'm, I'm kind of thankful for that. It's different. It's different. Oh, oh um, I know. I, I know. I've done it. I have. Two words. Frontage road. Yes. Frontage road. Yes. Yes. Only in Texas. And my favorite, bi-directional frontage roads. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's get some two-way action on both sides of the freeway so that when they come flying off that ramp at 85 miles an hour, or better yet, most of the stretches of the freeway, they don't even have like ropes or guardrail. And, and there'll be, no. there's all kinds of ramps that Texans just make. Yep. Like they should have a slip ramp to get down. You know what? And they just start driving it. And so the, you'll, you'll be going down the interstate and you'll see a big dust cloud and three or four big dually fucking lift kit trucks 
take a dirt off ramp that they've just beat down themselves to the front of road mm-hmm. because they know better than tech stuff. But anyway. Yeah. It's all, it's it's all good. We get around just fine. Complete lawlessness. And then if you get Whatever. into one of the big it's Texas, cities. Man. We do what we want. Texas has got the most segregated road system in the entire country. Yeah, that's If you get into any of the big cities, like if you're in Houston, then you've got the, was it the Hardy Toll Road and all these, uh, and the Hobby Toll Road and just, fuck, man, well, the toll roads. And, and it's even yeah, worse yeah, in yeah. Dallas with the DNT and the PGBT. And, and out there by you, uh, they built a new toll road around uh, Longview and Marshall. And it's a two-lane toll road facility. Tolls fucking everywhere. Oh, yeah. Tran- it's the TTA. Pay Trans- to play. Texas Toll pay to play. Authority. It's all about the pay to play. It's Joe Biden's America. You should know that. The best thing is the LBJ. That, that stands for Lyndon Baines Johnson. Of mm. course, that would be the 36th president of the United States. But that's also the namesake for the Dallas Bypass. Correct. The big ring road that goes around Dallas is called the LBJ. It's it's also known as Interstate 635. And um, was it stretch? Uh huh. Was it when did the stabbing in in Ireland happen that resulted in the riots? Uh oh. It's like Odyssey might be struggling a little bit, but we're good. Uh, let's see. Was it was it last week or was it earlier than that? The stabbing, I thought, was on the 20th, or was it the 18th? Okay, so that would have been before. I'm just trying to remember if the riots had happened uh, when we did the last show. I think they had, they were ongoing. Okay. Because we, we didn't, we didn't, we did mention Ireland. We did mention it, but we didn't get too deep into all the, the, the fun time action going on there, not just in Dublin, but in Cork and a couple other places. Okay. Um, because uh, Ireland is is uh, taking the lead for the WEF. No doubt. Uh, because following those riots, Ireland's media minister, I believe this person is, yeah, uh, I saw that. Is now I calling heard on the public to report any hate speech that they see online to the authorities. So no, we all... Ireland is going full Orwell. That's right, kids. Sticks this and stones your... may break my bones, yeah. but it's the words that fucking kill me. So the, we can just, I guess, assume that the media minister works for the Department of Ingsoc. Is that what's going on here? That's right. Forever war. Yeah. Two plus two equals five. There you go. So this is it. This is this is the play. This is what they're going to go with. The thing that, that we knew exactly that what they were going to do. That's what they're doing. You know, I'm actually seeing the plot of an Orwell novel take shape right now. Because right now, the United States and Canada and the United Kingdom and Australia, four of the five eyes are left standing with Israel (laughs) on the UN votes at the General Assembly. Because for some reason, I guess because of the Hakka dance in New Zealand, or for whatever reason, New Zealand is the first of the five eyes to kind of tiptoe a little bit to the left, to just kind of get halfway out of camera shot. Mm-hmm. It seemed like they're kind of recoiling away from this whole genocide apology tour for Israel. But that being said, let's let's just put the five eyes issue to the side. Who else is standing with Israel besides the five eyes? Well, that would be three tiny little palm trees in the Pacific Ocean, namely Palau, Micronesia, and the Marshall Islands. Um, You know, three great places for the United States to test nuclear weapons, for example. Um, So anyways, these three 
nation states in the Pacific are able to double the number of countries standing with Israel in these General Assembly votes so that there's eight countries, seven countries standing with Israel. But three of them are in what is known as Oceania. And so, oh, yeah. dare I say, what's going to happen when the Marshall Islands and Micronesia and Palau decide to drop their balls and say, we're not playing ball anymore. You five eyes dudes can have at it with Israel. We're going to do our own thing now. And that could be the impetus and the um, causes belly for a war with Oceania. A war against <laughs> A war against Polynesian anti-Semitism, which uh-huh. we all know is going to be the real problem in 2024. Polynesian anti-Semitism. Yeah, but we don't we don't have an East Asia yet. We we have a West Asia, but not an East Asia. West Asia being like Saudi Arabia, Iraq, right. you know, Israel, or, or Jordan, as I like to call Syria. it. The mids east, right? It's it's right, it's right. Reggie. It's Reggie. Right. It's mids. It, it's the Zionist state is some five dollar weed, folks. I mean, you know, and there's people that smoke that. Yeah, and I can and I can literally hear the seeds exploding. I can smell the stems. You poor bastard! Poor bastard! Smoking that hog on a shake. God uh, damn you! Uh, you know, sometimes Reggie's all right. <laughs> It's not bad all the time. <laughs> but yeah. They're, uh, uh, so the, the UN has also drafted uh, some sort of like guidelines to help people uh, with identifying and, and I guess reporting if it's something that's available to do in your country. I don't know. Um, oh, cool. You know, for misinformation, disinformation. Uh, what's that new one they came up with? Uh, 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 Mis- malinformation. Malinformation. Yeah. 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 Malinformed. So we're basically back to the whole reporting your neighbor for breaking quarantine in the in the Western world. Like we didn't fare too good with that back in 2020, from what I remember. Like I remember, like cops beating people for like being on the beach. I remember skate parks getting filled in with sand. I remember, uh, like boards being nailed in basketball hoops so you couldn't put a ball through it. Right. Right. Like that's the and, shit. And I, I remember. remember. I remember police going and showing up at Sunday services and breaking up these uh, terrorists with their Bibles and their praying stuff, mm-hmm. trying to continue on with, you know, separation of church and state and freedom of religion, which I kind of thought was the founding principle of the entire British colonization of our sacred turtle island. But I digress. I digress. Uh, it's really exciting to see where this is all going now because um, that's one word for they, it. They've completely <laughs> and totally lost the information war. Completely lost it, and they're not. You know, it used to be about what type of uh, content, what type of programming do we have to put on to bring in the latest generation, to get that coveted young demographic for advertisers and stuff. And it's just not happening. It's just not happening on network TV anymore. How many kids are watching Joy Behar and The View? Other than none. That's not for the kids. That's for the older people. Uh, that's, That's for the television watchers. The kids aren't watching TV. None that I've, but, I mean, I've, 
I haven't seen a kid watch TV like like network or cable in 20 years. Maybe. Well, see, this thing came out called the Internet and stuff. Right. And yeah. Right. And then like you can get the Internet on your like um, portable telephone device and all that stuff, too. Technology and stuff. Or or maybe not. Maybe you like it a different way. There are other ways that you can do it. That's the nice thing about the Internet is they uh, developed multiple delivery vectors to make sure that everybody could get in on it. Because, you know, some Isn't people look at that little black mirror, they look at that tiny little four inch by eight inch fondle slab and they think, I'd rather have a tablet. Bless your heart. Anyway. And for me, I like a mouse. I like being able to click a mouse. In fact, I like a trackball better than a mouse. But God knows, fucking laptop touch pads. Hmm. Oh, and then of course that that's all the smartphone is with the you know some of these phones you have to just constantly touch and swirl and titillate where it, it they're so demanding and you know yeah well they're made which, that way that's yeah. that's all by design speaking of which where where is my phone did i bring it up here because I remember, like, when the first smartphones were coming out, and I was, like, paying attention to the development of all of them. And I, I saw them all go in the exact same direction, which was not efficiency or, like, ease of use. It was in the opposite direction. All right. So we're going to do a little contest here. Uh-oh. Um, <clears throat> for those that guessed, in the chat, in the next two minutes, what is the Yona screensaver on the phone? And if you happen to guess what it is. It's a tramp stamp. There'll be a prize. There will be a prize. We'll figure out. We'll, we'll get you a shirt or something. We'll figure something out. Um, I will give you a clue. The image is not of a person so it's not it's not someone's picture but it's an image two minutes mm. what is the Yona screen saver so we'll come back come back to that I'm gonna say and then I can turn my phone off there you go I'm gonna say Yoda smoking a blunt no it, it, it's it's more political oh it's, shit uh, alright well well it's a it's a flag best guess that, there you go. I'll, I'll give one big, throbbing, raging Jason Burmis clue. It's a flag. And shout out to Red Voice Media. I hope Burmis gets it figured out and comes back on the air. Well, I think they, they had figured it out. There just wasn't any more money. Like, that, that happens, you know. People run out of money. Yeah. And did you go get more? Yeah. Well, I mean, there's always more out there. It's just a matter of called, going and getting it. It's called Sometimes. OnlyFans. You yeah. got to show a little leg. I'll show a little leg. Maybe some more than that. Well, unfortunately, it seems that's what most entrepreneurs are doing nowadays. You know, just sell a little bit of skin because, you know, it's just skin, right? Well, Can't I'm going to call it. I haven't seen It's not any- like they're cutting it off of you. I haven't Not guessed, yet, anyway. seen any uh, guesses, so let's see here. Pull the camera. Let's pop on the phone here. Uh-oh. We might Bloop. break the internet. Oh, Gadsden flag. Look at that. That's right. That's right. Don't tread on me, motherfuckers. Anyway. Good old Gadsden flag. All right. So just a little bit of fun. You know, trying try to involve the audience here. Keep <laughs> stepping it up here. Uh, there was one thing that I was wanting to about? mention, um, uh, and, and that is Hasbro, you know, mm-hmm. um, which the working title that I thought about for this episode seven was um, Masad Hasbro. Lie on your back, 
we'll do the work. Um, and, you know, it, it's kind of worked so far. I mean, you know, uh, like what we were getting into last night uh, with the Angry Tiger's Den, you know, the vilification of Islam, the villainization of Arabs, the generalization of everyone in the Middle East as just basically being, you know, if, if you hear them speaking that baka baka durka baka la Muhammad jihad shit, you know, they're fucking terrorists. And, you know, that, that this is these slurs and lies against Islam and Arabs in the Middle East has been pushed by Mossad, Israeli intelligence, and their propaganda, their Hasbara, Israel's planning. Uh, and this has been a propaganda project on the American people for 50 fucking years. To get every last American to just automatically equate the sound of the Arabic language or the mention of anything to do with Islam as being terrorist, kill them all. Terrorist, kill them all, which... You know, 1.8 billion practicing Muslims on the planet. It's the single largest religion on planet Earth. And if it's such a religion of constant warfare and invasion and taking shit over, and they're already the largest religion in the world, how come we all aren't forced into Islam? Hmm. Well, Clearly, it's, some it's, people it's, would say it's, they it's, just haven't gotten to that point yet. But, you know, when Islam is attacked... It hasn't always been the largest in the world. You know, what we typically hear about critiques of Islam, they're critiques of typically Wahhabism, which is a, mm. a weird cult of Islam um, that's perpetuated by the royal Saudi family mm. in Saudi Arabia. Uh, and Wahhabism is Creation different from British the rest British intelligence. Of and, and, you know, basically Wahhabism is, is created by the CIA and Lawrence of Arabia, uh, MI5, mm -hmm. um, and Mossad um, as, a, as, a, as a third way, <laughs> Clinton. <laughs> it was a third way, Democrat, a third way to Islam because uh, Sunni and Shia wasn't good enough. Uh, and, you know, you see the same thing with the Zionists where you've got your Orthodox Jews and you've got your Torah Jews. And so then you've got your Zionists who are all about, you know, this Talmudic fucking. And the Talmud's not even the Torah. It's, anyway, again, I, I see similarities where it gets so far away from the core value and message of the religion that it becomes a cult unto itself. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, as I stated last night, and I'm restating now. That's how I view Mormonism. What I, you know, what distinguishes a cult from a religion, because not all cults are religions, but some religions are in fact cults. Mm -hmm. And so the dis distinguishing characteristic of a cult to me is when they speak to exclusivity and superiority. When 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 you're when you're in a, a congregation that's openly preaching, we're the only ones that are blessed by God. We're the only ones that are praying the correct way. We're the only ones that are mystically converting this bread and wine into the literal flesh and blood of Jesus, mm -hmm. so that we can cannibalistically celebrate the Eucharist. You know, and, and you go through all these different faiths and denominations. And whenever they start saying, we alone are the only people that are doing it right, and absolutely everybody else is fucking wrong, and we have to convert them all. I don't want your Kool-Aid, bro. I'm ready to leave. Ew. That's gross. And that's Zionism. But Zionism ain't the only one. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I should probably be careful here, but I'm going to hit this pipe and say it anyways. Uh -oh. I never understood missionaries knocking on your door. Hey, we believe that God calls people to the mm -hmm. faith. 
and that God calls people to a life of service. But we're here at your door calling you to our religion because we can't wait for God to call you. So we're here on God's behalf. We know better than God. So we're coming to your door to bring you into our flock. Uh, and yeah, because it, it does seem kind of random, doesn't it? That they're just yeah. like, they're, we're just going to go knock around on doors and like, you know, God's going to come to people and we're going to be there to help receive him. And we don't know when it's going to happen or where it's going to happen. We just have to keep, you know, going house to house until it happens. Like, that's kind of, that's a little strange. That's a little weird. And, you know, again, I, I, Again, I have plenty of experience in my life going door to door, house to house. I, I explained that earlier, but I was selling a product. That's why I was doing it. I wonder if maybe they're doing something similar. I don't know. Um, the name of the publication is called The Watchtower. Yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> oh, I know all about it and when it was founded but, and who founded uh, it. And, yeah. You know, that with all due cult. respect to Jehovah's Witnesses, because uh, they're the ones that people think of first off whenever they think of people knocking at the door to ask you about Jesus. But as I can speak to from experience here, several years living in Section there's 8. There's other ones that do it too. There's other ones. There's lots. Uh, we've had Pentecostals. Mm -hmm. We've had Southern Baptists. We've had Free Will Baptists. We've had, did I mention Presbyterians already? Really? And the, Presbyterians? And Episcopalians. That surprises me. And the Episcopalians. Those people are lazy. But yet they came to section. Wow. I guess they're really hard up. That Their congregations are, are shrinking. They, they need new blood. And every one of these households, Section 8's got kids. So if you can get a mm. family with kids into the church, Breathe a new life into the pews, Drizzle. Trying to get our numbers up here. Uh, but, you know, wouldn't it be weird if you had two feathered and leathered Cherokees knocking on your door? Asking you, have you ever thought about the Great Spirit? Would I, you like to hit this peace pipe? Yeah. Yeah, I, I would actually. Come on in, fellas. Have that. a seat. Would you like something to drink? <laughs> Y'all seem like reasonable <laughs> folks. <laughs> Yo, yeah, traveling powwow well. missionaries. There you go. <laughs> yeah. We can start something new, something that actually you know works. What? That that might actually take off. I think it would. <laughs> you just have to be careful in, you know, states like Texas where it's still not legal. <laughs> <laughs> the stuff in the pipe i mean not the going door to door we got people that go door to door here too kimosabi have you thought about great spirit <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty good <laughs> man there's so many skits and stuff we could write like i'm supposed to do a comedy show once a month on modern retro radio with Audi uh, eventually here. And he asked me to uh, to do the show with him because he said he wants me to just do comedy skits and help put together stuff. But it's going to be, it's not going to be like our format where we just literally freestyle rap and just fly by the seat of our pants and just do this shit on the fly. I mean, right. He's, he's talking about, you know, storyboarding and we're going to do all pre film and have it all ready to go like professional wow fancy i know like and he was telling me like a, a bunch of his radio shows they're all pre-records you know and i mean I, I guess we could do pre-record but then how do you do like interaction well i guess you could still do interaction with the audience but then it just depends if on you're, how you're broadcasting it you know? That would be weird for me, though, because, like, say, for example, if we did a Get Back Carter and we pre-recorded it, yeah. and then we broadcast it at the regular time, and I go into the chat and start talking to people, I'm going to have to talk to people as though, as, as I'm going to have to talk to people about Yona in the third person, <laughs> because it's already played. 
<laughs> Which is I think, fine because I, I, think I, I understand already understand what you're getting person. at. I already use third person all the time. Right. The time. So now you'd have to be in like what two thirds person or something. Yeah, well, which means I would be an African American slave. <laughs> Two-thirds of them. Or is that three-fifths? Yeah, that's right. Shout out to the Old Dominion. <laughs> the state of my birth. Because <laughs> uh, Virginia uh, is for lovers, kiddos. Virginia is, is for lovers. That is the classic alley-oop play right there. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, we've, uh, we're have we at an it, hour and 50 minutes now, and we still haven't even talked about Sam Altman raping his sister. I thought that was That's right. I said it. I thought that was hey, she wrote Biden it. So if she's Ashley lying, Blazer. I'm just going off of what she's saying, what she wrote on her uh, Medium article, which is linked down in the replay notes for anyone who wants to read it. And it wasn't just like one time. It was like there was a pattern. That's what she's trying to point out. The same thing with Hunter and Ashley Blazer. Well, wow. Hunter Biden, Sam Bankman freed. Those could be, we, we got to get those two deep in the same room. They could be bros. That that should be a bromance, really. I'd love to see Sam and Hunter just, you know, maybe fly off to Kiev one weekend, hang out with Toki Smurf. You know. Maybe Sam Bankman Freak could figure out some, some good NFT stuff for them over there and, and Keith. Or I just, Keith or- I don't, I I'm I'm having a problem understanding how we've had like this uh long string of public black men in the last what month that have been hung up on sexual assault allegations most of them not like actual charges but just allegations you know most prominent of them probably being New York City mayor Eric Adams Right. Or, but it, 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 uh, it started with Puffy, my favorite black Puffy. British broadcaster, though. It, that, that, you remember, they started well, with my favorite black in England, Russell Brand. Oh, okay. All right. Um, yeah, Puffy, he's Puffy a maybe was the most well-known of all of them. Uh, and, of course, he's apparently actually really going down like they're burning him down. Um, wow. But, yeah, so Sam Altman's sister comes out, Mr. Genius, Mr. AI, Sam Altman, you know, media darling, man who's going to change the world, uh, whatever. His sister comes out and accuses him of rape publicly. Crickets. Nothing but fucking crickets. I heard it on No Agenda Show, and I've heard it nowhere else since. So the Altmans are from West Virginia. I don't know where they're from, uh, but the story could be Arkansas. Tells could be Arkansas. Hey, Maybe Alabama. I don't know. Well, nobody's more inbred than Massachusetts. Well, they know in many ways. It is yeah. the Bay State. It it's is true. Bay. All in the family. But seriously, like, how does that work? How does that work? Like, why why is this not getting any attention at all? And de- speaking of Hunter, too, didn't Hunter actually get indicted? Major indictments so, came yeah. in on Hunter and yeah. Joe Biden's brother. Yeah, and Hunter said he actually he wants to uh, testify in public. Yeah. Yeah. And I have been almost no coverage of that. I don't know why he would do that, but please, please, oh please! Uh, please maybe it's please. like a reverse it psychology was... thing where he's oh. like, if if I say that I'll do it, they won't actually ask me to do it, so I'll be all right. Could you he imagine? Just doesn't think anyone's going to call his bluff. Imagine if Hunter Biden is on the stand. And he does an Amber Heard in the witness box. No, I, I want to see Hunter Biden no, do the whole. Even better, even better. I want him to go like complete psychotic break and relive the courtroom scene from Goodfellas. You know, the one that I'm yeah. talking about at the very yeah. end of the movie where he gets yeah. up, stands up from the, the, uh, the fucking the stand 
and just gets up and starts walking out of the courtroom as he's finishing off the story. Yeah, that's what I want to see happen. And then, like, somebody shoots him, shoots him dead. I don't know. I don't know how to end that scene. I kept thinking Joe Biden wasn't going to make it to next fall, but then... I know. This is amazing. but, But now I realize... There's no way that he can't make it. They're not going to run out of clones. No, they're just masks. They don't even need full human clones, man. Just masks. We've known that the CIA has has had this technology for 20, 25, 30 years. Realistic-looking masks that'll fool you, fool me, fool anybody. Like, like that show, FX, that I used to watch on yeah. the FX channel. Yeah. And they would literally bust crimes and catch criminals using all of their super duper Hollywood skill sets. Yeah. It was so cool, you guys. All right. Well, we got about five Talmudic, minutes left. Talmudic Jews. Damn. I can't believe are, two hours has already gone by. I don't know about drinking Talmudic Jews. That's probably an acquired taste. Is it made of tamarind or something or maybe it's durian Ugh. the hell are you talking about i was reading the uh you know i keep going back to the chat oh. instigator yeah. said shout out to instigator Jews for tuning in tonight probably kazarians could be. could be i don't know I, I, not my area of study at the moment <laughs> Well, we've now about four minutes away. We've knocked down 11 of the 12 months of this year. Mm -hmm. Which means at this point, gay zero is basically six years away. Basically, I have six years to get ready for gay zero nothing. Yeah. And so. I mean, unless you're in the 50 and five program and then you have five years. Because you, know, you get to be the guinea pig to try all the shit out before launch. And, you know, that, that leads me to the last shout out of the night. And all of this furor, as the snowball has gotten larger and larger rolling down the hill, and it's picked up more and more letters and symbols, and now it's the LGBTQR CIA tramp stamp code and everything. Just scan with your cell phone the qr code that's right uh, and 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 i just want to give a special shout out to lesbians and gays you're not forgotten it all started with you it used to be le- about lesbians and gays and then came b and then came t and then came q and now all of a sudden it's all about trans and everything else hello still got a planet full of lesbians and gays out there and Yona loves you. <laughs> all right. I just want to say. Get, getting passed over, getting lost in all of this alphabet soup. We just had to turn it back, bring it back to the real. Shout out to the lesbians and gays in the audience. And uh, remember the Stonewall. All right. And that's it for the shout outs tonight, Driz. All right, man. Well, you know, we uh, we live by one motto. Here at Get Fact Harder. Get fact up. Stay fact up. It'll keep you out of trouble most of the time. It's a pretty good heuristic for life, I think. And and I've got the perfect, perfect t shirt for you. Uh, oh, Three words. Should I end it right now and make a, Three make words. a cliffhanger? It yeah. it just says drizzle fact me. Drizzle fact. And maybe on the back it'll say Yona fact me too. I don't know. I don't know. Ask the frog. The frog. <laughs> Drizzle fact me. 